Now, the Ninja, of course, is made to do juicing, so I can put water in there. Since I'm planning to get this wet anyway, I could do that. But just out of curiosity, I'm going to see what happens when I try to blend it dry. Looks like something that comes out of a javelina's rear end. Yum. It's Thursday, November 6th, 2014. Sunday, uh, this week, Sunday, I went out into one of the areas, it's a wash in the Phoenix city limits. One of these washes that goes miles and miles through the city and they've put in a sidewalk so people can jog, ride their, uh, ride their rollerblades or bicycles or whatever. And it's got all these uh, natural trees and plants and everything just growing in the wash. It's not cultivated uh, or landscaped in any way. And so I went in there and I had about two and a half hours, I believe. And I took a little section of that wash, maybe an eighth of a mile long. And all I had to to use to put things in was just a plastic grocery bag so i walked through the wash and every everything i came across that was food i picked it and put it in the bag uh, and so i filled up this bag then uh, waited a couple days yesterday i separated everything out and then i shelled the uh the palo verde beans and those are right here then I went through the next day and uh, basically took the, you know, shell or, or took the desert senna out of the pods. Today I went through and ground up all of the mesquite pods. Now I noticed that they're pretty sticky right now. Uh, the end result of what I got was something like oatmeal, but it, it really sticks together. So what I would do is any of this that I don't use today. I want to lay it out in the open, in the open air, and let it dry more, and maybe blend it up some more, because uh, I think it'd be more valuable if I can powderize it better. So I, I experimented with a, uh, a coffee grinder, and that didn't really work. And so then I went and used the Ninja juicer, and that chopped it up into little pieces. So this is all experimental. What I'm planning to do is to make a crock pot dish that's all 100% natural wild foods. Nothing cultivated, nothing store bought, except for the tools I used, the, the blender and the crock pot. Those are the only things that come from a store. The foods themselves are all natural. So I'm gonna use those ingredients. Uh, there will be Palo Verde beans, a ground up mesquite pods, some desert senna. Uh, I'm gonna sprinkle in some chaparral leaves for seasoning, uh, crush up some natural salt and put that in there for seasoning. And yesterday in the morning, I put some desert senna into a dish in water to soak it so that uh, I can take a lot of that bitterness and the oils out of it. And so I'm gonna start at that point. I stirred this a little bit to, to kind of move it around so that some, I wouldn't have some of these seeds that weren't well soaked. Some of them look like they were unaffected by the soaking, but I think I know better. All right, so the first ingredient, I'm gonna use about a cup of Palo Verde beans. I'm not gonna overdo it. I might double this, but I don't wanna ruin too many beans on an experiment if it doesn't turn out well. So I would use the same method as I would with, say, pinto beans, two and a half cups of water per one cup of Palo Verde beans, just as an experiment. I did not get out to good desert hackberry uh, area, so, but I did find a few desert hackberries where I was gathering food, so I'm gonna dump those in there. 
just because that's what I found on that one day and that should flavor it a little bit. This is a questionable ingredient. I found about two pods of acacia because it's not really in the season, but it's kind of like these other things. Some of them occasionally are still clinging to a bush or a tree. So I'm gonna put these acacia beans in here and you know, they have such a weird flavor. I have no idea if that's a good idea or a bad idea, but you know, I'm looking for the nutrition and the vitamins and nutrients that's in it. Okay, well, my mesquite pod stuff is kind of, <laughs> it's a little bit sticky. It looks a lot like oatmeal, but I'm gonna sift it because there's little thin shells that go around the seeds and the seeds will be nice. You know, they'll fluff up, they'll turn into some really good beans. Uh, the, the pods themselves will add a lot of flavoring, but those little shells that go over the seeds are gonna be irritating to swallow. So I'm going to sift through this and pull as many of those out by hand as I can reasonably without wasting too much time. So I'm going to leave the rest of this out in the open air to dry better now that it's ground up. And the stuff that I've removed husks from, I'm going to put that in that ninja again and see if I can grind it up better. Much better. So just the couple hours that this has been in the open air has dried it out enough that uh, I put it back into the juicer. It uh, it pulverized it a lot better. So I think uh, what I'll do with the rest of it is just make sure it's really well dried and then blend it up again. I'm gonna make more mesquite flour, if we can call it that, and add more water and see what happens when we slow cook it on low. Now two more things. Need a little salt in there and I'm going to try a few chaparral leaves just for fun. If that isn't well seasoned, what is? I'm gonna keep an eye on it, and when it needs more water, I'll add a little more. This is an experiment, I'm just seeing what happens. What I think would be really funny would be taking this to a chili cook-off and not telling anybody what it is. It'd be awesome. Because when you look at it, that's what it looks like. Does it taste like chili, though? No. The beans have a much more solid texture. The mesquite makes it kind of sweet. And there seems to be a little bit of a slight bitter flavor that might be from the desert senna that got into the water. I'm gonna try one of these hackberries and see what what happened to them while they were in the crock pot. It's very tender so you could load this up with hackberries and that'd be kind of cool. All right well I will call it a semi-culinary success. I might take out the desert senna if I did it again just to see if that would fix that very slight bitter flavor. But hey, here it is. So this was a 100% free and 100% wild dish. It took some prep time, but this would give me several meals. It was 100% wild. The only thing that wasn't wild, of course, was the appliances I used to prepare it. But besides that, I mean, how can you beat completely free, completely natural, completely wild. That's amazing. And I picked all this stuff in, like I said, about two and a half hours. And there's plenty of ingredients left over to make more fun stuff. And now I'm gonna make a cold infusion of chaparral. And I found a really simple method here. I just put a pile of chaparral into a little bucket. 
I pour water into it, fill it up, wait a good 24 hours, and when I come back, it should be dark yellow and cloudy, and then it's highly concentrated. I can mix that with a fruit juice or whatever I want. And now that'll go great with my uh, weird bean chili dish. I'm gonna do some experiments with mesquite. I have some really coarse ground mesquite pods here, and uh, I'm gonna see what I can do with it. First thing I'm going to do is put it in the Ninja juicer dry and grind it a lot finer. If it'll fit through this mesh, it's ready. First of all, this has been dried overnight out in the open. I stirred it frequently to keep it drying, you know, to just churn it up so that that coarse uh, ground mesquite would all dry out really well. Now it works much better in the Ninja. Uh, and that's all I have to do then is to strain it through that screen. And this is what I want. Anything that didn't strain through there is going back in. It's going to get ground up again. Yeah. I'm going to make some mesquite stuff. Yeah, some good stuff. And for inspiration, I'm going to turn to one of the Pima elders, George Webb. This is from the book, A Pima Remembers. And so I've got a couple ideas that he gave me in here. It says, Juan Aloso went to the storage basket and took out some V-hog. I don't know if that's how you say it. Mesquite beans and pounded them into a powder on the chupa mortar. That's a mortar, right? right? The powder was mixed with water and used as a sweet drink. Now this looks interesting. Oh, it's not completely mixed up yet. Good enough, I'm gonna see what it's like. That's unique. I like it. It's not bad at all. It has the texture of milk. It is pretty sweet. Uh, it doesn't taste like milk. It's all the sweet stuff from mesquite. <laughs> this was a good idea. Thank you, George. Sometimes the powder is put into a clay bowl, sprinkled with water, and covered with a damp cloth to harden into a cake when dry. This cake is put away and kept in store for winter. Eating a small piece of this cake, a Pima could go all day without other food. Since the Pima grew cotton, <clears throat> I'm sure that the cloth they covered it with was a cotton cloth, but I'm not sure if it makes a difference and I have no idea what this is made of. So, I'm just covering it with a wet cloth per the instructions and I'll let it dry. This has been sitting all day. I can't help it, I have to try it. Hmm. It's different. It's sweet and it's tangy. And it's good. It's like a lemon flavored cookie. A lemon cookie, yeah. It's sweet and it's lemony. <laughs> and there was no baking required. Actually, none at all. I think it's a success. Mr. George Webb just gave me two great ideas. So, the crock pot dish with the beans. Wow, um, it's very filling. I mean, I just eat a little bit and I feel full. One thing I did wrong, and I would do this different in the future, is I should have waited one more day until I learned how to process that mesquite flour down a little better because I'm pulling little pieces of husks out of my mouth as I'm eating it. Uh, and that's not something you're gonna wanna do. 
And also, speaking of which, when I made the mesquite uh, drink from the mesquite pod, you saw how it was really cloudy and milky and whatever, and that was just perfect, except there's a lot of sediment or grit at the bottom of that. And so what I want to do is go get a finer screen uh, to do one more process uh, where I will get the larger grit out of the flour and process it down to much finer flour. And so then I shouldn't have that problem afterwards. I found another method for preparing these where I can take the husks out in advance and the seeds. And I expect it'll be a little more time consuming than the other method of just blending with it. But what I'm hoping I'll achieve is I can separate the seeds easier. I don't have to worry about the husks. And that lemony flavor that made that uh, mesquite cookie taste like a lemon cookie, that's in this husk here. It's around the husk. So I might end up with a sweeter flour when I'm done. So basically just this part of the pod is what will get blended up and there will be no husk and no seed and no lemon flavor, just a sweet flower. That's what I'm hoping. Thank <laughs> you. 